offerings in our departments. Um, but again, just in, in alignment with our neighboring schools and per the just the guidance of our county, we wanted to move everything virtual uh, for this event, uh, just out of an abundance of caution for, for the safety of, of students, families, and our staff. And so uh, we appreciate everyone's flexibility. Um, before we continue any further, the programming for tonight really is broken down to two components. Um, if you're here for the webinar, this is one component. The other is um, going to be found on our school website. So if you go to glasgowms.fcps.edu, you will find our school homepage. And here's a screenshot. Once you click on that link and you go into the homepage and you scroll down, there's an announcement section that looks like this. The very first button that you'll see um, is titled Rising Sixth Grade Virtual Curriculum Night. So um, when you go to the Mr. announcement section, Mr. Sorry, Mr. go ahead. We can't see your screen, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We can see. All right, it how are we doing? Yeah, we can see it now. We didn't see any of the information that you had shared before. All right, apologize. No, you're fine. So um, here's a screenshot of what our homepage looks like. The URL is glasgowms.fcps.edu. So once you go to our homepage and you scroll all the way down, there's an announcement section and it looks like this. And the very first button here in this section um, is titled Rising Sixth Grade Virtual Curriculum Night, okay? Once you click on that button right here, um, you'll see a series of videos uh, about some of our major programs in our departments. Uh, there's a welcome video on there. And there's a, a, an important video about academic advising and course selections. Now, one thing to note, all the information that we share with you tonight, the videos that are available online um, on this page is really geared to equip parents and students just with the knowledge that they need to go into this coming school year. Right. Um, right now, we're working with our elementary feeder schools, the counselors and the teachers at your schools um, to talk about what the academic advising process looks like. So students are going to be completing think sheets uh, with their teachers at the elementary school. Later in February, our uh, our school counselors from Glasgow are either going to be going to our feeder schools or meeting with elementary students online to help them complete that course selection process. Uh, this video here goes over that whole process and what that looks like, all right? Um, so I encourage you, uh, these videos are live and they'll stay on our school website for a few more weeks. Uh, this is a wonderful resource if you wanna learn more about some of our programs, our advanced academics program. Uh, if you have questions about math placement, uh, we do have a lot of questions every year about math and the different pathways that are available. Um, information about um, our ESOL programming, our special education program and et cetera. Uh, some information about what it means for Glasgow Middle School to be an IBMYP school. So I do want to draw your attention to these resources that are available online. Uh, really half of our event is online with these videos that are posted for you. Um, and like this webinar, uh, and actually that's a good reminder for me to start recording this. Uh, we are going to record the webinar. We're going to have it uploaded to YouTube and then we'll share it with all of our families so that those captions are available um, for our families to see and view and just to refer back to. All right. Okay. And I see a question. Yep. And Mr. Powell, are you able to start uh, recording for us? Or actually, let me go ahead. I, I, I started recording minutes ago, so you're good. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So here's our agenda for this evening. We've invited staff members, teachers, coaches, department chairs from various areas to come and present a little bit about their own department, uh, about the curriculum that students in sixth grade will learn, and a little bit about where they might be headed uh, over the next several years when they come to Glasgow. All right. Um, so first on the agenda, we are going to invite um, speakers from our language and literature department. So we have Ms. Nicole Bevanar, who is a language arts lead teacher, and Ms. Nora Mullen, who is an instructional coach. Um, panelists, if you'll just turn your camera on and just let me know when I can progress to the next slide. All right. Hi, everyone. Josh, you can move to the next slide. Thank you. All right. Hi, welcome to the language and literature department. My name is Nicole Bevanor, and I am one of the sixth grade teachers here at Glasgow. Our vision in our department states that we uphold the belief that all students can grow into lifelong learners and readers. 
In each classroom across the department, diversity is celebrated and equity is implemented in order to meet the needs of all students from a whole child perspective. All right, so um, looking at our department practices, our department is committed to implementing best practices across all grade levels. So across all grade levels, we teach all of our students to read, write, think, and discuss in a workshop model that provides them access to rich text, specific and measurable learning targets, and rigorous tasks. Student-centered work time is prioritized and students have the daily choice in independent reading books. Partnered reading book clubs provide, provide opportunities for students to collaborate with one another. Writing about reading allows students to formulate their thoughts about text. And we promote a culture of problem solving and goal setting. We do this by taking and embracing risks and sharing responsibilities. In the language and literature department, collaboration and decision making drive our instruction and they help us to better understand and take collective ownership of our students. So instructional units serve as the foundation of our teaching and student learning here at Glasgow. So in sixth grade, students immerse themselves in nine units of study. The units are anywhere from two to five weeks long. So to begin the year, students engage in building a community of readers and writers prior to diving into fiction book clubs. After that, sixth graders move through nonfiction, critical literacy, functional texts, and poetry. And towards the second half of the year, students engage in content area research and testing as a genre. Finally, sixth graders wrap up the year with persuasive essay, book clubs, and independent writing projects. The seventh and eighth grade units differ, as you will see, as these grade levels are concept-based. So seventh grade explores the concepts of community, perception, identity, and challenge. And eighth grade engages with individualism, justice, truth, and reflection. Within each unit, we use the reading and writing workshop model and this model, again, allows all teachers to differentiate our instruction for a range of learners and focus on the authentic actions of readers and writers. So if you have any questions about the language and literature department at Glasgow, feel free to contact our wonderful department chair, Ms. Patricia Cotter at prcotter at fcps.edu. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Ms. Bevanor. Um, and just a quick note to all of our attendees today, we do have a question and answer section at the very end once all of our presentations are finished and we do have that block of time. So if you'll just hold your questions till the very end. Um, and also, if you have other questions, you can put in the chat as well, but we will open up the microphones and allow uh, just questions at the very end as well. All right. Next, we have Ms. Laura Kearns um, and Ms. Danielle Griffin. So Danielle is our academic dean and instructional coach for the math department. And Ms. Laura Kearns is one of our lead teachers. All right, so take it away. Thanks, Josh. So um, as Mr. Chung mentioned, one of the things that I would just like to start off by highlighting is that tonight we're really going to focus on math six options specifically. Um, there is, we often get questions about the pathway to algebra and other courses that students may take while at Glasgow. So I did just want to reference that you can refer back to our website where there is an entire video that does discuss that. As additionally, you can feel free to um, ask questions that we can answer at the end. So as a sixth grader, there will be two options for students. They will either be placed into Math 6 or Math 6 AA. Um, you'll note that if a student takes Math 6, the typical progression is coming from Math 5, where if a student is taking Math 6 AA, the previous course would be uh, Math 5 Advanced. Uh, additionally, if their students taking Math 6, they will sit for the Math 5 SOL this spring versus they would be taking the Math 6 SOL um, if they are going to progress on to Math 6 AA. The reason that we like to identify this is that um, math is slightly different than the rest of the courses, where if a student is actually taking 6 AA, we'll see, we'll look at it in a second, but the um, curriculum is much different as it is actually the grade level above. So I'm going to pass it off to Laura Kearns, who is our Math 6 lead, and she's going to share a little bit about the curriculum um, for Math 6. 
Thanks, Danielle. Yeah, as you can see on the screen, these are the units of study for Math 6. We'll also show you the units of study for Math 6 AA on the next slide. So you can just kind of take a look and see the differences in the units of study. Math 6 really builds on what the students are learning in Math 5. Um, a lot of it revolves around number sense of fractions and decimals. And go ahead, Joash, you can show the math six. Danielle, you want to speak to the math six units of study? Sure. So what you'll notice between the math six and math six AA is there are some similarities where some of the units might um, be both about the rational number system, but they truly build upon each other. So math six is going to provide more of a foundation where students are going to engage with models and the, uh, the conceptual aspect of why things are the way they are. Whereas when we get into math 6AA, which, act, which actually follows math 7 content, it's going to be one step further. So just to point out, there are um, some similarities, but they are two totally different curriculums. And now I'm going to pass it back over to Laura, and she's going to also talk about our math workshop model that we use. Yeah, so the entire math department at Glasgow uses the math workshop model, similar to our language arts department. Um, students may have some experience with the math workshop model from their elementary school. You can see the components of math workshop on the slide. Uh, we really feel that the components of the math workshop allow for differentiation in our instruction, as well as increased engagement in student learning. Students have more of a choice, as well as uh, interaction with their peers using the structure. We also provide ongoing assessments to guide our instruction in our small group. In addition, most of our math six classes are team taught, which allows us to have two teachers in the classroom and allows for smaller groups and really meeting the needs of all of our students. All right, thank you so much, Danielle and Laura. Next, we have our science department. And representing the science department is Ms. Caitlin Marmoreau. She's a teacher, but also our instructional coach for the science department. Hi, I'm Caitlin Marmoreau. Like Josh said, I'm the instructional coach, but I also teach seventh grade science. So I'm gonna to talk to you tonight about the standards and skills. How do we assess those skills? How do we teach those skills? And then some examples of differentiation. The standards are based on the Virginia Department of Education standards, but also include our IB skills. So those are skills, there's four core skills that students begin to practice in sixth grade and then continue to master through seventh and eighth grade. So in sixth grade, we start with astronomy, which the students absolutely love. And every year they just wanna do more planets. We talk about matter, energy, and then weather. In seventh grade, it's life science. So we talk about cells, heredity, cycles of matter, and ecosystems. Um, students will get a fish. We'll have to take care of a fish in ecosystems. So you might be getting a fish home. And in eighth grade, we teach matter much more concretely in much more depth, um, energy, and force and motion. So we teach Newton's laws of motion in eighth grade. All of our students are completing complex tasks every single day. You'll see in the third column, those are examples of the types of tasks that we design. So most days students are designing or planning or constructing with the content that they are learning. So I just wanted to give you guys some examples of the types of things that we're actually doing that help students build those four core IB skills. And there's a picture of students uh, measuring the temperature of soil and water for heat capacity. Here's an example of a rubric that we use for assessments. We start with a pre-assessment and every pre-assessment is graded using the rubric. Then we put students into category, into levels, and we make a strategy ladder based on those levels. Then students will be put into focused small groups to address the exact needs that they have. And that would go on for the whole unit. And at the end of the unit is a summative, but the summative is not the end. Students always have a chance to retake, relearn, and we work on those skills throughout the entire year. 
Um, so here are also some more examples of things that we do in science. Um, sixth grade science is really different than elementary school science. Um, we are working on real lab skills, on choosing lab roles, and also talking and communicating about our results. And here are just some pictures of our adorable sixth graders this year. They're, I'm just so proud of them. They're so excited to wear their goggles. It's amazing. So I just wanted to show everyone some pictures of them doing some real science with their goggles on and their masks on and just being amazing little scientists. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Marmoreau. Next, we have Ms. Julie Curl. She's our department chair uh, for the Individuals and Societies Department. Hi, Josh, and uh, hello, all parents. Um, yeah, so I'm the department chair for Individuals and Societies, which um, is our IB term for social studies, and I'm also a sixth grade uh, history teacher. So yes, history six is the first half of US history, and this is from our Colonial America unit um, from a couple of years ago. We can go to the next slide. And here's the normal progression. Um, history six is the first half of US history up until the Civil War. History seven then picks up where history six leaves off from reconstruction, just following the Civil War up until the modern day. And then in eighth grade, students will do civics, which is our government class. So they'll learn about state government, local government, um, political campaigns, um, economics, that kind of thing. And in case you're interested in the units of study, this is what we learn in sixth grade. They start off with a geography unit. Um, then we learn about um, Native Americans before um, European contact, then there's a European exploration unit, West African empires. Um, so we look at the cultures of West Africa to understand what um, enslaved Africans communities were like before they were brought um, to the colonies. Then we do colonial America, the American revolution. The new nation is all about um, the early government period, the constitution, that kind of thing. Westward expansion, um, activists, inventors, and then the civil war. Um, we also follow a workshop model and uh, I like to give graphics. So um, the other departments have mentioned that they follow a similar, but this is kind of how we spend our time. Uh, typically the first few minutes of class are the mini lesson. This is the direct instruction portion where we teach the skill. And in history six, we really focus a lot on um, supporting those literacy skills that they're learning in English six. Um, and then most of the class is independent and small group work. Um, we might have a couple of interruptions um, to bring the whole class back to practice a skill or to share out. Um, and then we typically end with an exit ticket or some sort of mastery check. Um, we as a county are committed to uh, the five principles of cultural responsiveness when we're teaching um, social studies classes. And these are the five pillars that um, the county social studies office um, is really supporting us and being able to develop. So we look at relationships, teachers encourage students to believe that they're capable and worthy learners and human beings. Um, this is a big one in sixth grade, we look at multiple perspectives. So right now we're in our American history or um, American Revolution unit, and we are looking at the, both the loyalist perspective and the patriot perspective, where they may have only gotten the patriot perspective in um, elementary school. Uh, relevance, we're always trying to connect what we're learning in history to students' lives and the current day um, events. Rigor, so we're always looking to have students process their learning in ways that affirm who they are and how they use language. And um, critical lens, so we're always having them think critically. So we're analyzing primary sources for bias right now. That was our lesson today. Um, and we're really trying to, like I said, back up that um, culture of thinking. So we use lots of thinking skills, um, thinking routines. So today in our class, we used one called See, Think, Wonder. Um, we also use ones called I Used to Think, Now I Think. They're just ways to get students really thinking um, using these little sort of sentence starters. We usually use them for warm-ups. And everything is posted on Schoology. So this is just a screenshot of my Schoology. Um, so you can see that assignments and recorded lessons are 
post it on all of ours um, so that parents can kind of keep up. Um, so we have a uh, electronic option and then many of our teachers also have paper options for students, um, but it makes it easy for us to kind of um, flip back and forth. Um, if students are on pause, they can always access everything and then parents can also see it and it, it's easier for students to kind of keep track. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Carell. All right, next up we have Mr. Morgan. Um, he's also one of our teachers and a uh, lead teacher for our HPE department. He's gonna share with you about health and physical education. Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Um, I'm one of the sixth grade teachers. I'm also the CT lead. And um, just wanted to give you a rundown of the year. And this year model is for seventh and eighth grade also. Uh, we, have, we do one whole quarter of health but it is broken up into two different sections. We start our year with health. And after a month of health, we do go into physical education for two months. And we are finishing our second section of health right now at the end of January. And for the remainder of our year, we're gonna be doing physical education. In our health classes, uh, we want the kids to be able to be prepared. So we want to make sure that they have their computer, their technology with them and a charger. It's always tough getting kids to have their chargers with them. Um, but we also want them to have their paper and pencil because we do make them right. I mean, it's not a lost art. We want them to do that as well. In physical education class, we want them to be prepared by having the right footwear. Uh, no, no Crocs, no flip flops, no Uggs. We want them to uh, be comfortable and be able to move around. So it also goes with their clothing. And I know there are some parents out there who have some questions about PE and clothing, and I'll, I'll address that in a minute or two. In our health classes, we go over many different things, including personal health, um, uh, diseases, body systems, and bullying is definitely one of our big uh, highlights in the, our first section of the year, bullying prevention, which we get help from our counselors to do. Alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs is another important unit that we, uh, we spend a lot of time on. Family life education, nutrition, and, uh, and digestion. Um, we do a lot of co-op games. Collaboration is one, a very important part, not only in our health classroom, but in our physical education classes. And we do a lot of skill work, but then we get the kids into teams. So collaboration in those teams is, is very important. And you think basketball, soccer, uh, volleyball, um, badminton, um, chook ball, ultimate ball. And I know people are like, chook ball, what is that? You yeah, Google it sometime. Um, I had to when I first arrived at Glasgow. Uh, so it's, we have a lot of fun. Uh, the classes are big, so you're going to have a lot of chance for meeting new people. Next slide, please. All right. As teachers, we want to make sure that they're in a safe environment, their surroundings, a physical, emotional, social, safe setting for them to learn. Um, and they're supported by not only us, but the administrators and their parents and following those uh, Panther principles in all of our classes. And what we expect from the kids is we expect the kids to be doing their best. Every single class, they're engaged in their learning and they're doing their best at all times. Next slide, please. We do, uh, for our testing, our summatives are our uh, criterion A. We went over a great uh, planning, uh, SMART goal for planning for their physical activity, for criterion B for, their, uh, for what they would like to get better at. Uh, and we do a lot of bell ringers and exit tickets, so formative. Um, in all classes, whether it's health or, phys or physical education, they are doing some written work. Um, now, a couple questions some, some may have. Does my child have to dress out for sixth grade PE? Right now, the kids have the option of dressing out. If they do choose to dress out, and not a lot of them do, to be honest, they can bring their own clothes from home. They have their own locker in PE. They have their own lock for the locker, so, they're in, so their items are safe. Everything is locked up. Their phones, their, their, uh, their technology, everything is locked up, so everything is safe. But right now, um, they don't have to change out right now. So I just want to let everybody know that. All right. Thank you. 
All right, thank you so much, Mr. Morgan. Next up, we have uh, Sonera Aradic. She's our department chair and also Spanish teacher. Good evening um, to everyone. Y buenas noches en especial a todos nuestros hispanohablantes aquí. Uh, my name is Megan Radek. I teach Spanish and I'm, our, I'm the department chair for world languages. Uh, Mr. Chung, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so just an overview of our world languages program. We offer several different languages at Glasgow um, and throughout all our language classes, we focus on four core skills. Um, so all our language classes are skills-based and we focus on the skills of reading, writing, speaking, and listening in the target language. These are also our four IB criteria for language acquisition. Next slide. So the language options that students at Glasgow have are Arabic, French, and Spanish. Um, and as they progress in Spanish, there are some more sub options there. It is our largest program. So starting in grade seven, we have a Spanish for fluent speakers option for students whose home language or one of their home languages may be Spanish, as well as we have our Spanish immersion program, which is a continuation of the elementary program offered uh, at Bailey's Elementary School. Next slide. So all our classes are very interactive and hands-on. And as sixth graders, um, rising sixth graders can sign up for uh, one of these classes. Any rising sixth grader can take introduction to Spanish or introduction to French. Those are both one semester electives, which gives them another elective um, for the other half of the year to explore another area of interest. We also have uh, our Arabic FLES program, which is a full year sixth grade Arabic class. And then finally, if you are coming from an elementary school Spanish immersion program, we offer the continuation of our immersion program for sixth graders, which is both Spanish language and sixth grade science offered in Spanish as part of that immersion program. So students who continue on in seventh and eighth grade uh, seventh and eighth graders can take classes that can earn them uh, one or more high school credits in their world language. It counts towards their high school diploma. Um, the sixth grade classes are not a prerequisite, so they do not have to take the intro classes to sign up for Spanish 1 or 1A or French 1 or 1A um, when they are in seventh or eighth grade. Um, they are a way for students to start to get to familiar with and explore a language, but they are not a prerequisite for those high school credit classes. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Radek. Uh, next up, we have Ms. Alexandra Blaine. Thank you very much, Mr. Chung. Um, I will be speaking to you today about the performing arts at Glasgow Middle School. I am the CT lead for the performing arts, so I'm excited to tell you what we have to offer. Next slide, please. Performing arts will be orchestra, band, chorus, and theater. Each of these classes are an elective that your sixth grader can choose from. So let's take a look at what each of these entails. First, we have orchestra. This is a year long elective. Students can choose from violin, viola, cello, and bass. So whether you've never played a musical instrument before, you took a break and are looking to come back, or you are continuing, there is a spot for every single student. Orchestra is uh, an opportunity for students to learn those instruments and to continue their skills, especially if they also took strings in elementary school. Strings and orchestra does refer to the same instruments. This is a co-curricular class, meaning that there will be some required events outside of the school day um, that usually pertains to the concerts that we give. So throughout the year, students give performances, and that especially becomes one of the highlights for the students. We talk to the students about certain um, co course fees and um, payments that might need to go along with this, but students can rent instruments for as low as $20. The next one we'll look at is band. This is also a year long elective. What is different from this is that you have uh, the instruments woodwind, brass and percussion. Again, there are different ensembles for the students to choose from. No prior experience is needed. We usually communicate with the elementary teachers to kind of see what, what playing ability your student is at 
or we can put them into a beginner class to really get them on track for success. This class is also co-curricular giving performances throughout the year, and there is a fee associated with the rental. We then have chorus. Again, this is also a year long elective. This focuses on your singing ability and performing with other students. Again, no prior experience needed. Students give performances throughout the year and you can have you can sign up and be a part of this class uh, with no, no previous experience. Lastly, we have theater. Theater is a semester long course. So that is a half year and it can be paired with another half year elective. Students in this course will develop an appreciation for theater and the ability to perform through an introduction to the basic concepts of acting, performance, and teamwork. They use skills and knowledge acquired to appreciate and understand the purpose of the arts in their immediate and in the global communities. So if you look at these next few slides, this does show the students here at Glasgow in action. Since these are participation and performance-based courses, you'll see that there's a lot of opportunities that come their way. On the left, you'll see the orchestra performing at Justice High School. On the right is the uh, band performing at eighth grade night. On the next slides, you'll see the GMS theater performing their fall play, or here's the chorus singing during class. These students have the, have the option to be in these courses in sixth grade, seventh grade, and in eighth grade. So a lot of times students find a community within these electives. Lastly, here's a list of the teachers for support. You'll notice that there are a few teachers associated with orchestra, myself, and then my co-teacher, Betsy Dizon. Band, we have Andrew Sherrick and Tammy Freeman. For chorus, Caitlin Hannell. And for theater, Ty Smiths Beasley. Feel free to reach out to them specifically for anything, uh, any questions, or I'm happy to answer those questions for you as well. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ms. Blaine. Uh, next up, we have Ms. Schenker, uh, who is our lead teacher for art. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Ms. Schenker. Um, next slide, please. So I'm one of the two art teachers here at, Miss, uh, at uh, Glasgow Middle School. Uh, myself and Ms. Gillis teach all three grade levels. Next slide, please. Uh, so we believe students learn best when they're engaged in class and the assignment. So we really put a focus on making sure that we're developing units and lessons that the students can really get their hands on, collaborate, um, really stretch out of their comfort zone to uh, be creative and uh, share their ideas. We want students to, again, step out of their comfort zone and try new things. We use a variety, a large variety of materials, mediums, idea explorations. Uh, we create a very comfortable setting for the students so they feel well to you know, create and share their artwork. We do things like gallery walks, we do shows in the classroom so that students have a lot of opportunities to share their artwork with their peers. Um, and we wanna create an environment where students do reach out for help where they feel like things are maybe a little bit tougher. Um, and our program, the sixth grade art uh, does have a concept around identity each grade level in uh, Fairfax County has a specific theme. So these students will be creating uh, artwork based around that theme. And they will be focusing on prob problem solving through creative outlets. And as mentioned, working with a wide variety of art mediums. And though sixth grade art is just one course as seventh and eighth graders, uh, students have the opportunity to take four other different art courses. Um, and sixth grade art is a semester long class. It, they will be in it for half the year. The other classes at Glasgow um, open for seventh and eighth graders. Uh, three of them are semester long and we do have one more advanced year long course. Next slide, please. Uh, so we, uh, our, our projects, uh, can change, but lately what we've been doing is we've been working on a collage that illustrates a goal or dream students have. We also have the students develop a drawing that represents their identity. Uh, they do a expressive color self-portrait using watercolor and decorative patterns. We work on clay relief tiles 
and uh, they use acrylic paint to paint those tiles. Now on the next slide, you'll see some student examples. Uh, this is the first big project the students work on where they use objects that represent their identity to spell out their name. So it really stretches their boundaries of thinking creatively to come up with ways to use you know, common objects to represent who they are as a person. And these become sketchbook covers in the class. So they, they have that form of identity um, on these kind of plain green notebooks they get. Next slide, please. This is our dream collage. So students illustrate a goal or dream that they have either for themselves or the greater good. Um, as you can see here, they really think a lot about um, their personal interests as well as things outside of their personal interests. Um, you know, a lot of them choose to do um, themes on, you know, helping world hunger or uh, saving the environment. So they, they really have a lot of um, creative range. They use magazines, painted paper. Um, so they have a lot of fun with this dream collage project. And the next slide, please. Our expressive color self-portrait. Um, this unit students, work, we work on portraiture, focusing on accurate proportions. So there's a focus on, you know, more realistic drawing and really getting the accurate features of the face on and then using the color to represent, you know, their personality and kind of bring that next level to it. So it's more than just a, you know, portrait of themselves. Um, and then they also spend time creating decorative backgrounds uh, using Zentangles and Sharpie markers. And the last slide, please or one of the last slides. And this is our clay tile unit. So students use clay to create relief tiles of a place that is special to them. We talk about um, you know, what makes this place special to them. We usually uh, surround this idea around what place makes them happy, excited, feel strong, feel safe. Uh, and students use a wide variety of locations to represent. And the students really love this project. It gets their hands on clay. They love seeing what other people are making. Um, and then they have the opportunity to paint them uh, using acrylic paint. Okay, next slide. Uh, we can't wait to see you in art class and we hope your student chooses this elective. And if you need to contact myself or Ms. Gillis, our email addresses are on the next slide. Um, or not. I think <laughs> Sorry, I think I can drop Ms. Schenker, but you can also just drop it in the chat if you wouldn't mind. Okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Ms. Grello. She's also one of our lead teachers, um, and she helps support the design department, and she'll be sharing next. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Curriculum Night. As Mr. Chung mentioned, my name is Rochelle Grillo and I'm the team lead for the CD department. And I'll be representing a number of really great tenured teachers. Our vision in the design department states that we uphold the belief that all students can grow into critical and creative thinkers and problem solvers. We use project-based and collaborative learning where we encourage students to be creative, think outside the box and push themselves to try new things. Our goal is to empower all students to confidently and successfully transition into post-secondary and career opportunities and become positive contributing members of society. Next slide. Uh, this is a new class that just started this year here at Glasgow, um, something that they can look forward to in the future. Journalism One is designed to provide an overview of the elements of newspaper journalism, including basic publication and journalism skills, focusing on writing articles, designing layouts for a website newspaper and literary magazines. Uh, students will explore these elements through readings, class discussions, debates, research assignments, and contributions to the pr production of the infamous Panther Post. This course provides students with opportunities to learn marketable, marketable production skills, develop individual writing, layout, and design styles, and assume the role of editorial leadership and responsibility for producing the Panther Post. Next slide. Media Communications, the class, um, otherwise known as Good Morning Glasgow, it's our new show. It's designed to provide an overview of the elements of broadcast journalism, as well as television production. 
Through this course, students will apply communication skills using various types of media. Students will learn the tools for working in front of and behind the camera. Additional skills covered include audio and video editing, script writing, creating storyboards, developing strong interview skills, working with the audio and video equipment, enhancing research, digital photography, and using computer software for presentations. Students will be responsible for creating and producing our new show, Good Morning Glasgow. Next slide, please. Yearbook. Uh, in this course, students learn basic principles of yearbook production and develop skills that include writing copy captions and headlines, digital photography, desktop publishing, and using appropriate technology tools for media production. Students will collaborate and learn the art of cooperative design. The school yearbook will be completed by around April. Um, during the remainder of the school year, the students will use their same skills to produce um, various choice projects. Next slide. Computer Explorations is a semester long course. Sorry, I forgot to say the last three courses were all year long courses. Um, this could be paired with another semester long. It prov provides students with the skills necessary to use the computer as a problem solving tool to complete a variety of projects. Students participate in team building activities that include both academic and business. <clears throat> Basic touch keyboarding instruction is provided in this course, as well as an introduction to software applications. Students will use these computer skills to complete cross-curricular activities. Next slide. And we have coding one and coding two. These are both semester long courses in coding and innovations technologies one. It introduces students to coding and emergency, I'm sorry, emerging technology through hands-on projects. Students will learn introductory coding concepts through a variety of apps and interactive websites. In addition, students will actively use technology to complete small group or individual projects. Students become confident in their ability to program and are prepared to use tools that are becoming standard in the workplace and in everyday life. Next slide. This is Coding and Innovative Technologies 2. This is also a semester long course designed to have students continue to learn and refine coding concepts. Students will create programs using JavaScript and, and Python. The major themes that will be covered are program development, modularity, algorithms and control, position and movement, variable storing information, career exploration, and workplace readiness. Students will be able to express their creativity with each unit of study, as well as sharpen their critical thinking and problem solving skills. And next slide. Introduction to Technology. This is also a semester long course. Students study the resources of all technology, including tools, energy, materials, people, time, information, and capital. This also includes the problem solving process and various hands-on activities. They study te technical drawing, explore computer aided design, 3D printing, which the students absolutely love. <laughs> I always get little trinkets, um, structures, model rocketry, and material fabrication. And next slide. And our last class is Family and Consumer Sciences. Um, Glasgow's FACTS course are project based learning programs designed to introduce 21st century skills in critical thinking, financial literacy, <laughs> excuse me, personal responsibility, problem solving, communication, collaboration, and the use of smart technology. Students enrolled in this course are involved in two dynamic units of study textiles technology and food technology. In textiles, besides enabling students to learn how to fix and repair items, it increases students' global awareness and enables them to create a project that expresses their creativity and learn how different cultures create fabrics. The obvious benefit to our food technology course is that it allows students to explore the areas associated with and around cooking. More importantly, the class allows the students to become aware of the benefits associated with health, I'm sorry, healthy eating for a long-term good health, the financial benefits of cooking at home, the safety issues surrounding the handling of food and the critical decision-making and problem-solving skills needed to bring a formula to life. 
So those are all of our courses. And I just wanted to, I'll drop my email in the chat if you have any questions about any of the design electives, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, thank you, Ms. Grillo. All right, next we have uh, Ms. Sarah Budart. Uh, she's our lead teacher for Panther Time and she'll share with you a little bit about what that means at Glasgow. Hi, everyone. Um, in addition to being the lead teacher for Panther Time, I also teach uh, sixth grade language arts. Um, so our vision for Panther Time is to build a community of students, families, and staff. And it's also our time to promote social emotional learning. We want to make sure at Glasgow that every student has at least one positive connection with an adult in the building, ideally more. So in Panther time, we work on building positive relationships. Students meet weekly during fourth period. So every other day, we share and cultivate our Panther principles of kindness, commitment, and safety. We also use the class time to teach, clarify, and reinforce school-wide expectations. So Panther Time shows up as fourth period learning seminar on a student schedule. And in this class, we talk about goals. We do a lot of goal setting work. We reflect on our goals. Um, we learn about our Panther principles, why they matter, how they should look at our school and in our lives. We share our thoughts and opinions in discussions. We take time to get organized. Sometimes we have catch up days where students can um, complete work for other classes or email their teachers, find out what they need to do. Um, to improve their grades. And we also spend a lot of time having fun. We want to make sure that our students can get to know each other um, through games and activities. And this is a class they're going to have all year long with the same people. So it's a great time to um, have fun. All right. Thank you so much uh, to all of our panelists for sharing just a little bit about your department and what students will be learning. Um, next, we, uh, we have a time set aside for question and answer. A couple instructions. If you would like to um, ask a question to one of our panelists, um, please, and if you take a look at the bottom of your screen or if you take a look at your menu, um, you want to click on reactions. And then once you click on reactions, there is a button for raising your hand. Uh, and then once you raise your hand, uh, one of the hosts uh, will be able to give you the uh, ability to talk uh, over the microphone to ask your question. And we'll try our best to try to get through as many questions as we can. All right, uh, we do have panelists and counselors who are also um, browsing the chat. So feel free to put your question in the chat as well. All right, so we're gonna open up this time for questions. All right, Nelko, go ahead. Hi, this is uh, the Morgan family. We're using my wife's iPad. But um, uh, so my, my son plays ice hockey at a pretty high level. And I know that a lot of uh, schools in the area are affiliated with like a, a high school league. Uh, is Glasgow um, affiliated? And I think this would be uh, addressed to like Mr. Morgan. Hi, uh, yes. Um, I have played a little bit of hockey um, and coached around you are able to in middle school you are allowed to join a uh, a school that does have a middle school team but we do not have one at this time okay so, thank you so much. I know there are a couple in Arlington or in the Northern Virginia Hockey League track and I just didn't, I hadn't seen ours affiliated with the leagues and uh next year it looks like he's going to go play for you know for little caps and I know that a lot of those players play around so I figured I'd ask you I appreciate it if he's playing little caps then he's probably a little more advanced than the middle school league I agree we're trying to grow the community a bit no worries all right great thanks Mr. Morgan all right and then you want to ask your question um, well, it's me, Yoel, and um, that's son, and I would like to ask if there's like a soccer team. Mr. Morgan, can we take that one too? Uh, yes. Yeah, we don't have any uh, middle school sports. We do play soccer in our, in our classes, but we do not, Fairfax County does not have middle school sports at this time. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Morgan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morgan. You're welcome. All right. Okay, I think it's Hong or Hang. Hang, yeah. So um, how many periods are there in a day? And then I think someone already had answered that there are two electives that they, the students can choose. But how many periods are there in the day? Uh, does the counselor, do you want to take that one? I know they're also uh, monitoring the chat. So there are, there are um, students will have uh, eight periods on their schedule. Uh, excuse me, they'll have nine periods, but in a day we have block scheduling. So there are four periods per day. Um, and we do block scheduling odd and even days. So on odd days, we'll have periods one, three, five, and seven. And then on even days will be periods two, four, six, and eight. And then our Panther time takes place in our fourth period. Um, there's also another period, we didn't talk about it in this presentation, but it's called flexible instructional time. Um, it's where we provide targeted interventions for students who need a little bit of extra support, or we provide enrichment for students who are, are at grade level already. And that also takes place during uh, the fourth period block, even though it shows up as period nine on their schedule. Uh, we go into more in depth uh, what that looks like with students when they do arrive, and we explain that uh, in, our, in, uh, in the information sessions that go out to school as well. All right. And Hank, did that, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. All right. Luke Vance. Uh, yes, hi, yes, thank you for taking my question. Um, I'm interested in my son um, taking honors classes um, next year. Does that, I, I suspect a lot of these questions are probably answered in that, those videos that you uh, pointed out to that are on the uh, school website, but I, I just wanted to know like how does the, the choosing his courses for next year, like can we put in a request that our child take honors courses and um, does it require teacher approval? Like, how does that work? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And I'm, I'm happy to give you a quick overview. So uh, with the exception of a few courses, almost all classes at the middle school level are open enrollment, uh, which means, you know, we try to provide our students and families with, you know, teacher recommendations. Our counselors meet with all of our students individually through the academic advising season. We'll be going to elementary school uh, schools to work with students, um, and we can provide recommendations for what types of courses might be most appropriate. However, students and families can choose to take the classes that they want to. So when your child completes the uh, a think sheet, which is basically like, it looks like a menu where they can select the classes that they wanna take. Um, and then this year, students are gonna take those courses on their think sheet, and they're gonna complete a Google form with the help of their elementary school counselor. And then all of those course requests, we upload those into our student information system. And then students and families will have access to see the course that they've signed up for. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Kelly. Hi, um, so my son is currently um, not at a school that's zoned for Glasgow, but because I believe he's in the AAP program, we are eligible to um, potentially come here. I was just curious about the um, the transportation situation. Is that already generally just prearranged or um, do I, would I have to do anything special? And then, sorry, a two part, um, is there a deadline for when I would need to, like when do we need to make that decision if you would be going here or to the school that he's zoned for? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, transportation is provided for students uh, and families who choose to activate their level four AAP status. Um, you know, you'll just have to make sure you communicate that to your school's registrar um, and, they, and they flag and they change some fields and SIS. 
Uh, and then we, um, basically there's a swap and then we have those students uh, brought into our database. Um, I don't know about the exact deadline for when that decision has to be made. I don't know, Mr. Powell, if you know, or if anybody else in the panelist team knows. No, but I can, um, I can put my email address in the chat if, if this parent would just circle back with me. I can, I can make sure that information is shared back out to them. Okay, great. great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yep, thank you. We hope you choose Glasgow. We love our neighboring schools, but <laughs> Glasgow is the place to be. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, Fitz. All right, Fritz, I've, okay, no problem. We do have time uh, for more questions. So if anybody has a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, see the, I see the chat's really active, so that's great too. Hi, I'm Adrian Cooper, one of the school counselors. I'm noticing a couple of questions about lockers. We find at Glasgow that the majority of our students don't take advantage of using the lockers. So that's something you'll wanna talk to a school counselor about if that's something you're interested in and we can guide you correctly. Thanks, Ms. Cooper. Hey, Ms. Grillo, I'm not sure if you're still with us. Uh, she may have had to step out. Let's see. I did see a question in the chat about, um, about the new show. Uh, it is an expectation that students who want to participate on the new show are in the class. Um, it's a, it does take a lot of work and preparation. And so um, if your child is interested in that class, we encourage them to do so, to sign up for that. Right. All right. Emnet, go ahead. Um, excuse me, sir. Are there any AAP classes in Glasgow? Absolutely. We have Emnet. We have AAP classes at all three grade levels for um, all of our core content areas, except for HPE. Um, so English, math, science, and history, we, we have AAP classes available. Okay, thank you. Welcome. All right, Yonatan. Um, we can, you can't um press any of the participants' chat or recording or nothing. It's only uh, it's only the hand and chat. I'm sorry, Yonatan. Can you say that one more time? That I can't see the participant, the chat or share screen or record or live that. All right, Jonathan, this meeting is a, it's a webinar, so it's gonna be a little bit different. So you can't see um, everybody else that's in the room as well. But we, let's see, right now we have about a hundred participants here today. So um, I, do, I do recognize that Jonathan, you're, you're not able to see everybody else that's here. All right, I think we'll leave this webinar open for just about another three minutes until 610. Um, so if you do have any questions, please go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, we'll allow you to ask a question. Uh, and if we, if you have a question that just goes un unanswered today, please reach out. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, a number of us have put our email addresses in the chat. 
Um, but I'll just show you this one slide um, right here. It has my email address. So you can reach out. Uh, and if we're unable to, if I'm unable to answer your question, I'll direct you to the right person who can. Okay, Madi, do you have another question? Yes, thank you. Um, my son is uh, currently in the mornings uh, between uh, the bus stop, uh, the bus dropping him off and school starting. Him and some of his classmates volunteer uh, at the school library. Are there opportunities for volunteer uh, volunteering at the library at Glasgow? That's a great question. We we love volunteers. Um, right now in the mornings, our library is really just kind of like a holding space for students who show up before classes begin. I'm sure if they reach out to our librarians and say, hey, we want to help, I'm sure they would love to help. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, we have just about one more minute for any other questions, uh, please raise your hand. Go ahead, Fritz. How long is the lunch period? Yep, lunch is approximately half an hour. It's about half an hour. Okay. Thank you for your question. And Sammy. Um, what kind of after school opportunities are there? Yeah, I don't know if anybody else wants to take this one. Uh, we have, we actually have an after school specialist, an entire after school um, staff with clubs, organizations. Um, our teachers are all required to stay after school for at least one day of the week to provide additional student support. Um, but we do have an extensive list. I will put the email address of Mr. Greg Williams in the chat, and he's a wonderful resource. He's our after school specialist, and he can answer any of those questions. All right, so we are at the end of our time. Um, so I just wanna thank everybody for attending. Um, once again, this webinar is recorded, so we will upload it to YouTube and make it available for all of our families. And we'll also publish it to our Glasgow homepage. So if there was something that we talked about that you'd wanna refer back to, um, it'll be available on our homepage as well. Um, once again, our counselors are working with our elementary schools uh, and our elementary school counterparts um, so that students have the think sheets uh, and all the resources that they need to complete their course selections. Um, this isn't on the slide, but I encourage all families, um, if you haven't done so already, to sign up for Parent View. Even at your elementary school, your school can help you sign up for a Parent View account. Um, and that way you're able to see course selections in there as well. Um, and it's a, it's a very important part uh, of your collaboration and partnership with us here at Glasgow Middle School when your student does come. And you'll be, you'll be receiving a series of emails from myself over the next several months, just preparing you uh, with important updates and uh, just, just, um, just key dates for major events, such as our open house and orientation. So uh, please make sure you have your Parent View account up to date. So thank you, everybody. Uh, just a special thank you to all our panelists uh, who are here to help present. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me at jhchung.fcps.edu. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Powell for any last remarks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been awesome for our families and thank you to our staff as well um, this evening for sharing just such a, a great wealth of information that I know our, our new students are gonna take advantage of. 
Um, something I, I definitely want to make sure that I underscore is uh, please make sure that you sign up um, for our newsletter. It's never too early to start getting information um, about our school um, as well. Um, again, I, I'll continue to put my, my email address in the chat. So if you ever want to reach out and have any questions about our school, we definitely want to be accommodating um, to all our new families as well, um, not just um, for the spring, but obviously throughout the summer and even I'm um, obviously preparing for the fall. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I definitely want to continue to put out, you know, something that I continuously do, you know, throughout the year and even throughout the summer is, you know, welcoming our families in a whole host of ways, um, whether that's through home visits, whether it's getting out in the community and meeting families in various spaces. So I'm, I'm eager to get to know your little ones. So um, I do home visits pretty much every week or meet families that in, somewhere in the community, connect with our kids and connect with our families even before they, they come. Um, and so it's something that I do throughout the year and throughout the summer. So know that that's an option for families if, as they want to get to know me, get to know the school um, as well. We have a very welcoming um, community um, here at Glasgow. We want to make sure that your child has the best possible experience um, while they're with us um, at Glasgow Middle School. So we're super excited to have you in our school. Um, and so continue to reach out to those that are on uh, the panel tonight, uh, given the contact information that was put in the chat. Um, and so we're super excited for you to finish out this year at the elementary schools where you are, but also to join us at Glasgow Middle School for next year. Thank you for attending. Stop.